The biggest mistake Destiny 2 players make is not using weapon surges. And there are a lot of other common mistakes like this that severely impact how you play the game. So here are 10 mistakes you should avoid, and I bet at least one of them applies to you. I'm Marshix, and you need to use weapon surges. These are armor mods that go on your boots, and they will significantly increase the damage of your weapons while you have armor charges. One mod will increase your damage by 10%, two mods will increase it by 17%, and three mods will increase it by 22%. If you didn't know, more damage is good. And because siphon mods exist, you can easily have these damage buffs active basically all the time. This effect stacks with other buffs like Well of Radiance and Bubble, so they are must-haves when it comes to DPS phases. If you want the highest possible damage output, you have to use three of these mods. Get the buff from one of those supers, grab their orbs to activate your surges, and nuke the boss with your heavy. I constantly see people forgetting to throw these mods on during raid encounters, and those people are conveniently at the bottom of the leaderboard. Weird how that works. Another thing people forget to use is high resilience. The most fundamental goal of Destiny 2 is not dying, and resilience makes it harder to die by giving you up to 30% damage resistance at all times. It just makes sense to prioritize this stat over all the others. You don't absolutely need max resilience, but you should definitely try for the highest you can. I never let this get below 70, and I use another source of damage reduction that people also tend to forget about, which are resist mods. These mods go on your chest piece, and each one of them will protect you from a specific type of damage. There are elemental resist mods for each element, as well as concussive dampener to protect against splash damage, sniper resist for long range encounters, and melee resist for enemies who don't understand personal space. You're making a huge mistake if you don't have some combination of these all the time. Once again, your number one priority in this game is to not die, and these passively help with that. But I need my reserve mods! Well, if you wear your reserve mods, then pick up ammo or rally a flag, you can swap back to your resist mods and still keep the extra ammo from their reserves. So there's no real downside. More ammo, and you won't die. Unless you're bad. Another common mistake is ignoring Xur. Every weekend, Xur will appear in either the Tower Hangar, Watcher's Grave on Nessus, or Winding Cove in the EDZ. Xur sells a variety of weapons, armor, and exotics. These are some of the best items in the game, and all you have to do is buy them with legendary shards. If you're a newer player, or someone who quit and came back, simply buying items from Xur can quickly get you caught up. But his inventory changes every week, so you need to check back often to see if he has anything good. It might not be back for a long time. This next mistake should be self-explanatory, so I'll make it fast. In PvE, only three weapon mods matter. Minor Spec, Major Spec, and Boss Spec. Anything else is a waste. These will give you a 7% damage buff against the corresponding enemy type. Minor Spec is for enemies with red health bars, Major Spec is for orange health bars, and Boss Spec is for bosses and vehicles. For the most part, all primary weapons should have Minor Spec, all Special Weapons should have Major Spec, and all Heavy Weapons should have Boss Spec, or whichever mod fits the role of that specific weapon. Also, if you have an Adept weapon, you can use Adept Big Ones, which is literally just boss spec and major spec combined into one. All other mods are pure garbage compared to these. Which would you rather have? A permanent damage buff, or Icarus Grip to jump snipe a dreg? Exactly. There's literally no reason to use anything other than these mods in PvE, and you can't convince me otherwise. Except Sweaty Confetti. Something a lot of people don't realize is that champion mods aren't just for fighting champions. Hitting an enemy with overload rounds will make them deal less damage to you. Weapons with unstoppable rounds will cause enemies to stagger. And weapons with anti-barrier are the best since they can shoot through most enemy shields and through some immunities like this hobgoblin. Also, these weapons will always be overcharged in activities where that's relevant. Long story short, if you have access to champion mods on your weapons, use them. Whether you're facing champions or not, they're still really helpful. Another easy mistake to make is not fully unlocking every subclass. You can have access to every grenade, melee, super, class ability, and jump, as well as multiple aspects and dozens of fragments which can be used to create countless different builds. If you don't unlock them, you're missing out on a lot of customization. Stasis and strand subclasses take a lot of grinding to unlock, so it's understandable if you don't unlock everything, but light subclasses on the other hand are stupid easy to get. You just need to go to the tower, talk to Ikora, and buy everything with Glimmer. Simple enough. A huge mistake people make all the time is not equipping the best ghost mods. The main way you increase your power level now is through XP, and there's literally a ghost mod that says you gain 12% more XP. 
If you aren't wearing this at all times, you're missing out on so much progress towards not only your season pass, but your overall power level as well. You will regret not using this, especially when you pop bounties and seasonal challenges. But that's not the only mod you should have on at all times. You should always wear an armor mod to ensure all armor you pick up will have a minimum of 10 in whichever stat you choose, and it's more likely to drop even higher. Remember when I said resilience was important? Well, this helps with that. For the most part, none of the other ghost mods matter, or they're very situational, so these are by far the best ones and absolutely worth using all the time. One mistake 90% of people make is not leaving a like on the video. It takes two seconds, and when you click it, it tells YouTube you enjoy content like this and helps show the video to more people. Do it or else. There are a ton of people who make this next mistake and suffer because of it. Not using the meta. It might seem boring using the same stuff everyone else is, but there's a reason they're using it and why you're always at the bottom of the leaderboard. Don't be afraid to look up guides or builds to know what's good, and if you have the best gear, you might as well use it. It will make your life 10 times easier. Or maybe you just enjoy the challenge. In which case, fair enough. The next mistake I see people make all the time is not using this sparrow. Always on time is literally the fastest sparrow in the game, and it's not even close. It's labeled as the same speed as all the others, but it's definitely not. If you have this sparrow, there's no reason to use anything else. And it's not even like this is pay to win, since it doesn't even drop from Eververse. You get it at the exotic monument in the tower for 240 spoils of conquest, which you can get completely solo, and this video will show you how to do that. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm Marshix, and I'll see you next time.